I realized that there are some things that I left out about the Chessington thing, which I needed to say, which is that, um, okay, yeah, I believe in the point system where with all the, the, the bigger rides, you have a point system, which is perhaps maybe like a pound in the first between, between opening time and 11, maybe you could have like a, a one pound system, which would be like two points. Um, and then from 11 o'clock through till when the queues start getting lower, um, you know, ha have it as a, as a two pound system. Um, and and then when the queues start dropping, that's when, you know, the the people. But I also needed to mention that you need to have the um, the scanning of it right at the, the end, because a lot of times the, 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 the ride breaks down. Therefore, you don't want to be scanning these these tickets or these pointing systems when you enter the queue. Um, you would want to um, to do it, um, you know, w w just before you get on the ride um and and yeah but you, you would need to though make sure that there's like boxes around where people can check to see how many points they have on it to make sure they don't end up spending an hour in a queue only to um i mean i suppose there could be something that can be done you know if someone has waited an hour in a queue or wait well the with the point system it should be far less but if someone has just waited half an hour in the queue and they don't have enough points i'm sure they could just you know go off and put some more on and then come back i'm sure the people scanning can remember a couple of faces um, if they're just going off and coming back 10 minutes later. Um, but yeah, I, I think, um, you know, that they could add the points on just as they're entering the ride. That way, if the ride does break down, then at least they don't, you know, get charge points that they don't end up using. Um, and I guess there could also be a way of if, if the, the ride does break down as they're sitting on the ride, um, there could be a way of easily putting the points back on. Um, you know, if you, if you scan, if it's got like a barcode and the people have like something to scan it um, and say if, if the ride does break down before it's gone, then they can always just find a way of scanning the points back on to, um, I guess that the, the, the barcode would be like a register of, of um you know it would be a, attached to a system but i think that's quite a good idea and of course it doesn't have to be for every ride you know there, there will be plenty of rides that don't have long queues hence um hence they don't need to have the ticketing idea the ticketing i the ticking tick, ticketing system will only be for queues that are longer than half an hour so if a queue doesn't have a, a if there's a ride that doesn't have a queue that's that's half an hour oh, that's you know over half an hour then doesn't doesn't need the pointing system the, the point the, the ticketing this system but um but yeah i also need to say um my experience of this is that yeah even though i became a member first for the first time when i was 12 um i found that i only i usually only went by myself i remember um my dad didn't like theme parks at all but he did like autumn towers because they had a garden there um and he liked visiting that garden so he um he, he was happy to drive me there um, and I went there with Bieber the first time. She was a lot taller than me and I do remember her getting on a lot more rides than I did. There was a couple of rides that I couldn't get on because of my height but she she was okay. She, her height was was okay with that but she didn't actually like the big rides so um, so it was annoying. I wanted to go on them and I was probably you know far more I don't know I, I was far more keen to get on and she didn't want to get on but she could because she had the height which is which was really annoying that was my first experience um um and although my dad doesn't go go there now because um because the gardens that they have there aren't very good um he has less reason to go and i i don't think autumn towers realizes that you know part of I know that it's mostly for kids, but at the same time, if, if it's somewhere in the middle of nowhere, you know, you need to have something for adults because there are a lot of selfish parents out there that are only going to want to go if they can enjoy something. And if parents don't like the rides, then, you know, they they need to have a reason to go. And if you have a really nice garden, then you, you give the, the parents more reason to go because they're going for their own sake of seeing the gardens or, or the castle or whatever. Um, but I, I feel like over the years that kind of changed and the garden became less and less nice and my dad stopped wanting to go to this place and therefore if, if my dad doesn't go then I can't get there because I don't have a car and there's a lot of kids that probably want to go to Autumn Towers but can only go if their parents drive them and well if the parents don't want to go then they can't go so um, with Autumn Towers you, de you definitely need to have have more things more attractions for adults because 
the adults are only going to drive the kids if if they can you know enjoy something themselves um but but yeah so i my experience though of, of going you know when i first started becoming a member is when i was 12 and was the right height um you know i i the first time i i met, i spent i i was i went with i was going with laura my my best friend from um Bieber was my best friend and then i i was kind of swapped over for laura um instead um and yeah i was going with her but i, I invited so many people in sylvia young and they were all like oh yeah yeah we want to come we want to come and they were yeah you know, I, I was getting quite a lot of people saying that they're interested but whenever i came to choosing a date i found that people kept being like oh i can't do this day and oh I'm, I'm doing i'm busy this day and so the number of people that you know wanted to come versus the number of people that could actually come on a specific date suddenly changed and you know the eight people that seemed very interested kind of just turned into two people so i i did manage to get a group but it was very very hard and very hard to to organize and to to get everyone to actually be interested on the day that you happen to choose um and and i think a lot of people a lot of 12 year olds wouldn't travel from one side of london to the other by themselves to go to a theme park um but most people would do it in a group the problem is by doing it with a group a group organizing groups is just very hard and i really wanted to go so i was just like okay I, i'm gonna forget the friends and i'm just gonna go by myself and um i think i was very independent when i was a child hence hence traveling traveling across London to go to a theme park by myself was something I kind of did all the time um and I I was a I I went to Sylvia Young but I had a very strong dyslexia and my mum kind of blamed the school and and said that I need to go to a special dyslexic school so I went to so in the last term so I was there for a year and a half um but in the last term um I I, I went to Sylvia Young two days a week and um a, a regular a dyslexic school three days a week um but because of this change i found it quite easy to bunk school because you could tell the regular school that oh i have to go to my other school on this day and really you just sort of skived off and, and went to theme parks instead so um yeah I, I went when i was 12 i went to theme parks quite a lot because i had this free membership pass and i had a, a very easy way of getting out of school by like oh no i've got two schools i need to go to my other school today and it's just like nope i'm actually going to a theme park but anyway